Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Mentor, a Siemens business, with Muhammad Ali, who's going to talk today about functional safety and design. So, Muhammad, what are the challenges that you have to deal with when you're developing a chip for functional safety applications? Well, uh, the, the most important challenge that the, uh, the customer is seeing right now is being able to achieve the, uh, the, the, set, the standard set numbers for the ASL level. Like for ASLB and ASLD, they are talking about um, a, uh, coverage numbers, anything between 60% for ASLB latent fault metrics and 90% uh, for single point fault metrics, while for ASLD it is 90% for uh, latent fault metrics which is very challenging, especially if you want to use a simple solution like uh, logic uh, for as a safety mechanism. Can you actually get to those numbers? Well, in most of the cases, you cannot. And people, uh, I mean, it's, it's probably simpler and easier for uh, uh, latent fault metrics uh, for ACLB, where the target is 60%, which is something you can achieve with uh, a, a traditional logic best. But if you are targeting 90% coverage, it's become very challenging. And then the overhead in terms of the test time and the area uh, will, be, will explode, uh, basically. So, Why don't you draw this out for us? Oh, yeah, sure. Mohammed, what are we looking at here? So what we are looking at here is the traditional uh, logic best, which is basically um, you have all your scan chains of the design between a BRPG, which is basically the circuit that generate the sort of random patterns, and the miser that collects the response from the circuitry. And for simplicity here, I'm looking at a AND gate as part of the combinational logic in the design. I want to capture the response of the AND gate. So we have shift cycles, and the end of the shift cycles we capture the response. So um, what I'm looking at here is, let's say that we started with shifting values, anything with zeros and ones, and we end up with a one. Uh, and this one, we will start with one and end up with a, another one. So at the end of the capture, we're actually having a, uh, a one on both sides. So we are testing actually for a stack at zero fault. But we could also be testing for a stack at one if we consider this one, which is a zero one here, which means we are testing for a stack at one. The problem is we cannot capture this response with the traditional um, logic based uh, circuitry. And here's where the new technology come into play that I'm, I'm talking about. Logic BIST takes up a good portion of the chip too, right? So if you put in too much BIST, there's only so much room for anything else. That is, that is completely correct. And the, uh, another benefit of this technology is actually reduces the area overhead. Uh, required to add all those uh, uh, test points to uh, help you achieve the coverage. And one of the things about BIST is that you're really monitoring the chip as it goes out into the field too. So you you have internal checks that you can go you can test against, right? Yeah. So basically, what you do is whenever you have a time and this, according to standard, called the the uh, detection uh, test or detection time interval. And you go and actually convert the whole design into a test mode and run the, run the test, making sure it is, there is no structure uh, uh, defects in the design and then bring it back to the mission mode so we can operate again on it. So what do you do about this? What's the answer? Okay, so we know that we are able to capture post uh, uh, the stack at zero and stack at one, theoretically, but there are things need to be done in the circuit to be able to do that. And uh, these are... Um, uh, this is the typical uh, flop, scan flop that we have. One of those flops are here. And you have the inputs either coming from a, a data input or a scanning input. And if I take this circuitry right here, it's going to be the AND gate, my AND gate driving this data input. And the scanning input, or scan in is, is coming from a, another part of the design. What I want to do right now is being able to capture the response of, of this AND gate at my scan input at the same time. Um, and to be able to do that, I will need to add a XOR gate that takes the the the, the output of the uh, the uh, AND gate and the input from the uh, the other scan uh, flop. This way, I will be able to capture the response of this AND gate during both shift and any of the capture uh, sorry during both capture and any of the shift cycles I have here. So rather than just adding more BIST into the chip, what you're doing is making it more efficient, right? Yes. This way, I, I mean, um, um, we did the, the study and we already have uh, results saying that this way um, we can uh, dramatically drop the number of this point, the number of BIST circuitry needed by at least uh, uh, 2x or 3x depending on the design. 
So you are reducing the area overhead to achieve the same coverage. At the same time, you are reducing the test time by doing that because you are actually capturing, the, you are actually collecting response during the shift and the capture. So that has multiple benefits, one of which is you can either make more room on the chip for something else, or you can add in more reliability into the chip with uh, uh, just by increasing this, or you also can lower the cost of the overall device as well too, right? Yes, and, and most importantly, in some design, you are not able to use the logic best for ASL B application or even ASLD application as a latent fault, uh, uh, mechan latent fault detection mechanisms. With this technology, you are able to address the ASLD requirements with the simple solution of a logic boost. Does this monitor the degradation of some of the circuits over time as well. So one of the things about BIST is you can uh, say, how is this going to perform in five years? Do can What's what's the fall off in terms of performance on this chip or what's the functionality change? That, that is exactly, and we've seen customers actually using it for this kind of application, monitoring the aging of the chip uh, over time because it's, it's one of the critical aspects that you need to look at when you do an automotive uh, uh, IC is to monitor the aging. And typically, or what they are doing is actually they are measuring the delay and see if the delay increases. Once the delay increases with time, it means that's a sign of aging on the chip. What other markets are you starting to see this in? Is it just automotive or is it moving into other areas as well? Well, functional safety, it is not just for automotive. Functional safety is, it ranges from aerospace, medical, uh, automotive. But the reason why we are seeing it in automotive is basically because all of the, uh, what we're seeing is the, all of the uh, semiconductors or IB provider are moving into this domain and this era. This is why actually we are, we are saying that it's, it's gonna target them. But it, it is usable for, uh, like I said, aerospace, uh, medical, anything that has a fun industrial probably is more stringent than automotive yet. I mean, it's not, it's not that common, but it's, it's, it, it is suitable for all those applications. But automotive is going to grow at a rapid pace simply because so many companies are electrifying the vehicles now too, right? Exactly. That's true. Yeah. So what do you have to think about when you're working with this kind of technology? What's different now versus what you were doing with BIST? Well, the, um, the, the, the main difference here is that I can, I can probably reduce the, test, the detection time interval um, to um, one third or, or one fifth of the time, which is for me is, is uh, enabling me to go into a domain, an area where I was not able to do uh, using the, uh, the traditional uh, uh, logic based as a safety monitor. Does that save power as well as you uh, get out into the field? Well, if we are talking about the uh, running a list number of patterns, it definitely will affect the power. Because the, at the end, uh, what we've seen with, with customers is that uh, we, we can go down to one-tenth of the number of patterns. And you can think of how much power you can save just running one-tenth. Um, Muhammad Ali, thanks for a really interesting discussion. Thank you so much.